Good morning, church. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the vicar for giving me an opportunity to just come and uh, share her testimony with you. Um, this is a testimony that is touching on loss. Loss. The times are with us today where every family is facing a loss in one way or the other. Either it is a loss of a loved one, loss in business, loss in whatever form. And it is a loss because we place so much value in what we have lost. That's why it becomes a loss, because of the value that we put onto that which we do not now have. And uh, my testimony is going to touch on my family. And my family is not any different from any other. Probably the only difference is the blessings that we have received from the Lord that will be different. Those blessings that we have been able to get. Because we have been able, I have been able to turn the loss into a blessing. And how does this come about? This come about with the realization that whatever loss that you are incurring or you are going through, you see it as a promotion. It is a promotion. Promotion to another level. The Lord takes you to another level so that you may be able to contribute at that level. You may be living happily as husband and wife. And one is taken away. You now are promoted and you are now a widow. What are you going to do under those circumstances? It is a promotion because the Lord wants to use you in that new position. He has been with you in the old position and you need to have a change. In 1973, I lost my dad and uh, we were now without a father. But the Lord had blessed us. You won't believe this. We are 15 children. We were 15 children. Same mother, same father. Yeah? That was a blessing. In between, we lost brothers and sisters. But I want to pick up the one of 73 because we lost our dad. My mom didn't give up. In fact, strangely enough, my mom is the one who was sickly. She was asthmatic. And my uncles used to joke about her death, how she was going to die soon. But it's my dad who died in 73, at the age of 51. Then my mother was to live another 34 years after that. My mother didn't give up. She became stronger. The Lord provided for us. I was in school and my mom could still work hard. Provided for her. And she was able to support my school at Lenana. Then the Duke of York. And the, it wasn't cheap at all, but she took us through. You may recall some of you in 2008, I lost my son. My son died. He was a member of this church. We were then members of this church. And uh, it was an experience that we went through after losing our firstborn. 
And death comes to us at different stages. There are some who uh, die, uh, die at inborn, not even born. We've experienced that as well. Before our first sound came, we lost a child at inborn. But what was remark remarkable about George, our son, is the experience how the Lord now took us through with George not being there, the experience we went through. The Lord was preparing us to be able to minister to others. Because what happened to, in this church thereafter, some of you may recall, various families lost their children. Various families lost their children in here. And we were able to comfort them. We were able to play that role. And some of you may recall my wife, Pat, she actually even took, uh, went to a course and did a training on loss and grief. And she has continued to do that. Even today, she has traveled to Embu to console a, a family there who had lost. Now, how did the Lord use us? How did the Lord bring me to that realization? Is that the Lord prepares us in remarkable ways. And the one that I want to touch on is the one of family. Family. And I look at family in three different ways. The biological family, which we all have. You may not need to work on it. Then we have the social. And I call it capital, actually, because you need to invest in it. Yeah? And then the most important one is the spiritual family that we have. And that is you and I, the church. And we're able to see the church coming in, the Lord using the church. There was a youth church which was always with us. There was this church which was with us. And they made life comfortable for us. It was the Lord who was doing all that and strengthening us. So this loss, I was going through emptiness. I was going through loneliness. I was feeling like I'm in a deep hole and I needed to be lifted up. And you have to be there for the Lord to use you to lift that person. Feeling isolated, you have to be there for the Lord to use you. And this is the importance of the church. It's important because many a times we take things lightly. Even just a greeting in the church. Because it's amazing how the Lord uses people. You, lose somebody, you have lost somebody out of death. It's announced here, the church appears there. And you see someone who has been attending church and you had not even greeted that person. But the Lord has made that person to come to your house at that time. So brothers and sisters, we can do better. We can do better in investing in this spiritual capital, which I'm calling spiritual capital. And how do we do this? The church has ministries here. Because those are the, that, that is the family which I'm talking about. The family of Mother's Union. The family of Men of St. Francis. TE groups. Those are the ones which came in to help me. Because I could see them participating. Know what the Lord can do for you. And the only way you can know that is through Bible study fellowship. You must have that. And the church has got it for us. We need to strengthen our church. 
I felt virtually uplifted. In 2017, I've already told you that my mom died 34 years later. She was 85. She was a big blessing for us. After the death of my mother, we were now promoted to be orphans. Because my dad had died, now my mom dies, now we are orphans. And what happened? The Lord took care of us, and we have not lacked. We have not lacked. Yeah? I've done well in my business, at my place of work, so has all my siblings. Those are blessings. So now you're beginning to see loss and blessings coming together, going hand in hand. Then I want to fast forward to 2017. Um, some of you may not have seen me here since before the COVID, but you may have seen that uh, the last time I was with crutches, I was having some crutches. And I'd gone through an operation, total knee replacement. That's also a loss. It's a loss because you are moving from what you have used to what you used to enjoy. And I used to enjoy a lot. I played a lot of rugby, and some of you may know, and all that, playing golf and all those things. But the Lord now promoted me to a different level. And in that promotion, there was also an awakening. There was an awakening. And my awakening came like this. For those of you who don't know, there are some doctors in the house. Total knee replacement, the kind of pain that you get, the pain, they, call, they say it is excruciating pain. Yeah? They cut your knee completely, put it aside, and put something else there. These ordinary painkillers don't work. They use Morphine, it might be related to Wajakaya's campaign. <laughs> you get hallucinations, eh? and you're going through that pain. And when you get up, I'm telling you, the only thing that keeps you going is being able to sing these hymns that we sing here. And I recall telling the vicar, how great is thy faithfulness became my special. Great is thy faithfulness. And amidst that, for you to wake up from that pain, and who do you see? You see the vicar standing there. I don't know if you can recall. The vicar at M.P. Shah, standing there with a group of people that have come from here. How else, how else could that be? If it is not because of the family that we need to work on. So, we have work to do. Like any other investment, you have to invest. That's why I call it capital. This spiritual capital. You have to invest in it. So you have to do the basic things that are there, that are, we're told about in church here every day. Join a cell group. Cell group will immediately know what is happening to you. And they'll be able to coordinate and bring the church in, the bigger church. Study the word of God. Offer yourself to be able to serve. That's the only way that the Lord will come close to you. It's an investment, brothers and sisters like any other investment, the spiritual one. Just like you invest in uh, social, you have friends. That's another family that was able to help me. My friends, my place of work, when I lost my son, they were able to come in quite strongly. 
Of course, I'll not forget the TEU group that also came to support me. I would like to end there by singing one song that, uh, in fact, I see on you know, the program coming later on for us to sing together, because it captures what I'm saying about this. Maybe you could join me. When upon life's billows you are crossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them want to pray for Tom and the family. Uh, indeed, God has been faithful. It has been a journey, and God has been faithful. Let's all pray. Stretch your hands towards Tom. Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you for your servant Tom and uh, Pam and the family, Jehovah God. Indeed, they have gone through a journey of loss, but God, you are our God even when we go through losses. Thank you that you have uplifted them, Jehovah, that today he can stand and declare of your goodness in the land of the living. Thank you because they were not consumed, O oh Jehovah. And Lord God Almighty, how I pray that you continue to journey with them and take them from one level of glory to another. We honor you and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.